when I just started collecting there were countless times when I almost bought a Young Hands watch. Something about the design of Young Hands watches appeals to me on a deeper level. But I never pulled the trigger and by the end of this video I think you will understand why. In today's video I will do a review of this Young Hands Max Bill chronoscope. I will point out all the positives and the negatives as I see them. Now let's start the review by talking about the specs on the watch. It has a diameter of 40 millimeters. It's about 42 and a half millimeters from one lug to another. The lug opening is 20 millimeters and it's about 14.4 millimeters thick. The case is made out of stainless steel. The strap is made out of leather. Crystal is sapphire with AR coating. Also, you should know that these watches are available with acrylic crystal. This one here is the one with sapphire. Water resistance is 30 meters. It's powered by the movement caliber J880.2 and it has a price of 2250. The finishes on the case are executed well. This watch has an all polished case. There are no satin finishes anywhere to be found on this watch. Sometimes all polished finishes on watches can appear a bit boring, a bit cheap even. I'm happy to say not here. The case has a couple of unique angles which add a lot of visual interest to this watch. The case back is held with screws and that's part of the reason why water resistance rating is so low. It's 30 meters. Another reason for such low water resistance rating are the chronograph pushers and the crown. We have pump style chrono pushers. The engagement and disengagement on the chronograph is very satisfying. The crown is located at the three o'clock position. It's a push pull style crown and surprisingly the crown is unsigned. I guess they're taking this minimalistic aesthetic very seriously. Speaking of the minimalistic aesthetic, take a look at this dial. Is this gorgeous or what? Yes, the design is subjective, but I think majority of people would agree that there's something very attractive about the simple design language used on this watch. This watch is almost all dial. The bezel is non-existent. I think it's the use of negative space that makes this dial and the whole watch look so different. It lets the dial breathe, so to speak. This model is also available with a bit of a different dial. That one is a little bit busier with Arabic numerals. Out of the two, I prefer the simplistic look of this one, the watch that we're reviewing today. The logo is located at a nine o'clock position, the date window at the three o'clock position. There are two chrono sub registers, one by 12 o'clock and one by six. The one by 12 is the 30 minute chrono counter. The one by six is a 12 hour chrono counter. There's even a bit of loom on this dial. You probably already noticed these little loom pips at three, six, nine, and 12. The hands are also loomed. Here's a loom shot for your reference. This Max Bill chronoscope is a strap monster. I've seen people wear it even on NATO straps. That's how versatile these watches are. Out of the box, the watch comes on this black leather strap. The strap is pretty good, the stitching looks competent, and the hardware is well executed. We see an all finished tank buckle with a signed Young Hands logo. To be honest, this leather strap is not much to look at. It's pretty good, but nothing special. My guess is if you buy this watch, you will buy more leather straps to complement its looks. On the wrist, this watch looks quite unique. Because the whole diameter of the watch is pretty much dial, I think it wears larger than you would expect. I don't mean that this looks oversized, not by any means, but it does have a wrist presence. The leg to leg distance on this model is quite short, so even if you have a bit of a smaller wrist, I think wearing this watch should be no problem. There are two things that I noticed while wearing this chrono. One, it is a bit on the thicker side at 14.4 millimeters. A lot of that thickness does come from a domed sapphire crystal. However, it is still thick nevertheless. Wearing this watch under a well-fitted cuff of a dress shirt might be a bit of a challenge. The second thing that I noticed while wearing this watch is the rotor noise and the vibration. Both the thickness and the rotor noise can be attributed to the movement used in this model. It's powered by the caliber J 880.2, which is essentially a Valjoux 5570. I think Young Hands has modified the movement to extend the power reserve from 42 hours to 48 hours, but that's pretty much it. Everything else about the movement is Valjoux 7750. If you've been watching this channel or if you've been in a watch collecting hobby, you probably already have some experience, some knowledge of this movement. Unfortunately, these automatic chronograph movements are known for their rotor noise. 
but for whatever reason in this case uh, it kind of amplifies the noise uh, i guess because the case itself is so light uh, you can really feel the vibration while you wear the watch on your wrist if you're planning to wear it as a dress watch, yeah, it's a pretty big negative. But if you classify this watch as an everyday watch, that's how you're planning to wear it in a more casual setting, yeah, then it's not such a big deal. And this sort of dichotomy of this watch and what it's supposed to be is exactly why I haven't bought one. Even though I really love the look of this watch, but I can't really pinpoint what this watch is supposed to be and how it will stand in my collection. At a first glance, it appears like a classic dress watch. But if you look into the thickness of the watch and also the uh, noisiness of the rotor, yeah, then it's not really a true dress watch. I think there are better options. Okay, then it's an everyday type of watch. But with only 30 meters of water resistance and an all polished case, this doesn't make it the best candidate for daily wear. There are better watches for that as well. So in my opinion, this watch kind of positions itself somewhere between a dress watch and a casual watch. It's pretty good at both of those things, but it's not great at either one of them. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more videos like this. A huge thank you to Russell Jewelers for lending me this watch for a review. They are Young Hands authorized dealer. Check out their website. The link will be in the description below. Also in the description below, there is a secret link. Check that out as well. Thanks for watching this one and we'll see you next time. Bye.